other areas on this website, you will learn that part of the battle in personal injury litigation is being able to find someone who is able to pay the damages for the loss that's been sustained. In the area of wrongful death cases, finding someone to be able to pay those damages is even more critical because the damages are always so much more than they are in potentially a standard automobile accident where someone has you know, problems or they need uh, potentially a surgery. And I don't mean to say that a standard automobile case doesn't have real damages because it does, but just by virtue of the fact that unfortunately someone has passed away, it's easy to understand that the damages are greater in a wrongful death case. I've had experience working on a wrongful death case and on many wrongful death cases where you have to go after and find someone who is responsible but that also has the ability to compensate the family for the loss that they've sustained. I recently handled a case where it was a drive away from a gas station where Basically, someone stole gas and took off, and whenever they took off, the people from the store left following them, and it wound up being a three-person collision, a three-car collision, and unfortunately, as a result of a chain of events after the crash, one of the passengers in the front vehicle passed away. Well, after she passed away, the task was daunting because the middle vehicle never hit the front vehicle until it got hit by the third vehicle. I know that's kind of complicated, but basically three hit two and then two hit one. What well, was our belief and our opinion that vehicle number two, which stole the gas, set into event this chain of circumstances because the only reason three was on the road chasing number two was because they had stolen from them. Well, we went to court, we filed the suit, and sure enough, Car number two comes in with its attorneys and says, hey, we're not responsible here because the at-fault party is number three who hit us. All we were doing was driving down the road. Of course, we objected that and we said no to that, but the trial court agreed with the argument of trial number two, agreed with the argument of car number two, and that case had to then be appealed to the First District Court of Appeals in Tallahassee where we had to ask the court to reinstate that case. You can find a link on this website where that argument was done by myself and you'll see the opposing lawyers and you'll see the judges asking the questions. Fortunately, I'm happy to report that after hearing the arguments and after reviewing all the briefs in the case, which I handle exclusively, the judges reversed the decision of the trial court three to zero and remanded the case back for further consideration by the trial court and ultimately a decision by a jury. Fortunately, after that decision was rendered by the First District Court of Appeal, we were able to then reach a satisfactory resolution for our client and help the surviving children of that lady. She's a wonderful lady. Well, understanding that that's the job of the attorney and to go and go and fight and fight until justice is achieved in that case is something that I understand and something that I'm passionate about. I encourage you, if you have time or interest, please look at the video where that argument occurred at the First District Court of Appeal. And you can also read the opinion that was issued by the First District Court of Appeal in Tallahassee. And you can begin to understand how serious these battles are, but the amount of work that goes into what the judges actually hear and what they actually decide is critical and it's got to be done and it's got to be done correctly.